on a cool late October morning. We want to welcome you to Shenandoah National Park. Uh, we are somewhere in central Virginia. We got the mountains ahead of us. We're heading west. We're going to the closest national park of the Big 60. Closest one to our house, and that would be Shenandoah National Park. Nice night last night. Actually splurged, Julie. Got your hotel. If it's below 40 degrees, ladies and gentlemen, I need to treat my wife to a hotel. And a quick footnote on the hotels. It's not that I'm against hotels. It's just hard for me to justify spending. And usually if you want a place that doesn't have like roaches on the floor, $100 a night just to put your head down, fall asleep and lay there for eight hours. But in defense of the hotel, it certainly was nice to wake up in a warm bed, have a nice clean shower, and not have to pack up all your camping equipment. And one more point of clarification regarding the cockroaches. I've only been in that situation a couple times where I've seen them in hotels. But when I speak of cockroaches, I'm just speaking in general of hotels that are disgusting, all right? They're just gross. And we had a great time yesterday too. If you haven't seen the video at Chesapeake Bay. Did you have fun yesterday, Julia, at Chesapeake Bay? I did. I had a lot of fun. It's very nice. So uh, it's a little chilly this morning. It's about 29 when we got up. We're looking at a high of around mid 50s and we're gonna do some hiking. Just the two of us, no children. Wow, this is, uh, you miss them, but it's kind of nice, isn't it, Julie, huh? It is. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna enjoy some time together at Shenandoah National Park. Thanks for traveling with us. You get yourself through this park, there's one road, it's called Skyline Drive. 35 miles an hour, so you're not gonna get around too quickly. But every few miles, you have a scenic pullout where you can stop and get a nice panoramic view of the valley below. Rapidan, is that right? Rapidan. Rapidan. Camp area. We're on the trail. We just did three river crossings and we're getting close, about a mile and a half into it right now, where we're going to find the encampment that, who is it? Herbert, Herbert Hoover? Herbert Hoover. He used to come when he was the president of the United States and do some fishing, I'm assuming in the stream that we just crossed. And he built himself a camp and many of those original buildings are still standing. So hopefully we'll find those and maybe get some more information on them when we arrive. So we're just discussing, we're having a hard time placing Herbert Hoover in the timeline of history. I'm guessing like the 40s. Either way, what's that, what do you think? I, I, <laughs> I know that FDR was the 40s, but I don't know when Herbert Hoover came. He's in that era somewhere though, I believe, right? Yeah. A car to the base of the mountain and then horses from there. But either way, Skyline Drive, we were told, was not built yet at this time, so uh, it was uh, definitely a, uh, a rustic way to get up here, uh, but I'm sure when he got here, it was very pristine and tranquil. Um, just this untouched area of this beautiful part of creation. All right, so I was off by a decade. Hoover would have been president from 1929, just when the Great Depression started to 1933, I believe it would be, four years. And we are now at his encampment. And this thing is amazing because you have to consider they didn't have a helicopter that dropped in all these supplies. All this came up by horseback. Um, and there's a few buildings left. We'll show you some of those buildings. We were just told we're not allowed to videotape inside a couple of them. But behind me is, what is that? Great Look at that fireplace. I don't know if that was connected to a house at one point or it's an outdoor fireplace, but... They put some work into this place. So we're at the Prime Minister's house. What was his name? Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald of England was a frequent guest of Hoover. There's the man right there. It's Mrs. Hoover working with all the children. Check out this guy. He doesn't look very happy. I'd like to sit up on this deck. Look at that beautiful stream right behind you. That'll do it for Herbert Hoover's encampment. Any, uh, any thoughts on the encampment, Julie? 
Well, I think it's a really good place for people to go and see these sites that presidents lived because I think you really learn to appreciate, especially some of the um, community work that they did and the way they donated a lot of their personal money to help out the community during a hard time in our country. That's good. These guys really sacrificed for our country. It's a shame that we don't learn about them as much as we should in our history books and also when we do, it's oftentimes just the negative or, or seen through our our eyes in the in the age in which we live. But uh, these were pretty amazing people. And oftentimes you don't hear much about their wives too, you know? And a lot of the presidents that we've studied recently of, of sites we've attended, their wives were incredible, incredible women. We gotta hike uphill now, get back to where we started. And then we gotta get some lunch because we've had nothing since breakfast. Here we go. I hope you like that little commentary because that's a part of the trail that we shouldn't have been on. We're on the wrong trail. So we go, we're backtracking, get on the correct trail. So it's the difference between a mile and a half back or about seven miles back. And since we're due for lunch, I think we're gonna go the mile and a half back. How you doing back there? I'm a little out of breath. Whew. That's some serious elevation climb we just did. Even with a bad shoe, you're sprinting up the hill. <laughs> Gotta wait for us people that aren't used to hiking the Grand Canyon. <laughs> oh man. Just throw rocks at me and tell me to slow down. I think we're coming up to our river crossing here. Are we leaving the horse trail? Now we're gonna finish it up on the blue trail. We intentionally booked this trip for this weekend because all of the fall foliage, leaf color changing charts said this is the prime week to be at Shenandoah. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but an aerial shot over this area in peak fall colors is absolutely stunning. Well, all that to say, we didn't get what we were expecting. Ranger was telling us that every year it's completely unpredictable. It depends so much on the temperatures and the rainfall and the humidity and some years they get amazing displays of color and some years they don't get much at all so here we are technically peak season hasn't arrived yet but if you look at a lot of the trees around me there's a couple that are changing color back there but for the most part all the leaves have already fallen off so it's unpredictable you win some you lose some still so nice to be here and as we finish, we get to take about 50 steps on the most famous trail in America, in my opinion, the Appalachian Trail. And here it is, tiny, tiny strip of the Appalachian Trail. That sign brings back some good memories. So this is an America's Parks first. <laughs> so I say an America's Parks first, only because this is the first time that we're gonna eat at a National Park Lodge. I don't know where it came from, Julie, but I got this reputation that I eat like <laughs> peanut butter and tuna fish all the time when I come to national parks. And we have some dear friends from church. We're not gonna say their name, but they're probably watching this. They know who they are, and we're <laughs> thankful for them. They said, will you please, if you're going with your wife, take her out and get her a nice meal. We'll even pay for it. So on behalf of this mystery family, that we know who they are, but you don't know who they are, Thank you. We are gonna eat <laughs> at the lodge right now. I've never done that in all of my adventures to the national parks. I didn't even know these places had lodges. <laughs> all right, what do you got there? Chicken salad. What's nice, that? Huh? And one of my favorites, I get these about once a year, a Reuben. Boy, this is better than Subway, isn't it? Should we come here more often? We're gonna head over now to the general store and get ourselves a little treat. We were here like four years ago and we got blackberry shakes. Is that and the one were... we dropped in the parking lot? Oh, that's actually, that was the time we were here like 12 years ago. I wait four years to get one of these things. These are good. And they're still as good as they've always been. 
This is my new friend right here. This is my new friend. Look at her. Get her in the picture. <laughs> this is Cynthia. This is Cynthia right here. <laughs> Cynthia, Cynthia gives advice, and I gotta put this on record. That next so time when I come remember. back, I need to do what? Blackberry milkshake with blackberry ice cream. Okay. And I'm about to tell them. That's you want to say don't you, Cynthia? No. Come on. <laughs> that's not very blackberry, is it? I'm going to return this and have it get over. No, no, no. I'm just teasing. I'm no, fine. it's not. I'm very fine with this. It's good. Are you sure? I'm totally fine. I'll yeah. Blackberry ice cream. You know I've been looking forward to this for four years. I think I should. <laughs> what do you stop the camera for? I think I should make one with blackberry ice cream. Oh, you're so sweet, Cynthia. I mean, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to let you say I'll make it. All right. All right. And she's not coming back for four years. At least. At least. That's too long. All right, so. Give that to her. <laughs> the lady feels sorry for me. She's going to make me another shake. A blackberry shake with blackberry. Ice cream. Only you. Only you. People are friendly. People are friendly. This is only you. <laughs> so it looks like we got this one for free now. And you're going to get a shake after all, Julie. This one belongs to you. I don't want to. Whoa, look at Cynthia, guys. Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Wow. You better try it right now. We're going to do a taste test right here. Okay. Now, you're going to be here four years from now when we come back? I will see. I'm retired from my job and I came up here to help out. Wow. Is it amazing? I thought that was good. I'm spoiled now. That's the old speed. Cynthia, when I come back in four years, I'm going to ask for you. Okay. All right. But I'm not a waitress. I'm a cashier. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll pull you away, and we'll still get you to whip one up for us. Okay. Let her taste it. <laughs> See Let me taste. All right. Cynthia, Bye. thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. So this is how we do it. We're just very nice and sweet, and make friends with everyone. And you walk away with two milkshakes. <laughs> not one two. milkshake. Two milkshakes. <laughs> Large. Look how big that thing is. You have to help me out with this.